guys, so today I am doing a CentOS installation tutorial. CentOS is a great alternative to Red Hat. It's an enterprise level open source Linux distribution that also provides 100% binary compatibility with Red Hat. So if you're familiar with Red Hat and you know a lot of the commands to do updates and install packages, and this is a great alternative and it's completely free. So if your company can't afford to pay for the Red Hat network subscription and the support, CentOS is a great alternative. So today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do the installation and some of the options that come along with the installation. So just first thing you want to do is go to CentOS.org and download the CentOS ISO image. You can either burn that on a DVD or if you have an ILO port or IPMI port configured on your system, go ahead and do a virtual uh, disk over the network, which is very easy. You'll be first presented with this installation option. Go ahead and select the first option, install or upgrade an existing system. It will go ahead and boot into Anaconda, which is the Linux uh, distribution installation kernel. And it's going to go ahead and present you with these options. It's going to ask you if you want to test your disk. You can go ahead and skip that. And it's going to start running the wizard. This is Anaconda running. It's a nice wizard that gives you a nice step-by-step -step instructions on how to install your operating system. First, you'll be presented with a language. You go ahead and select the language of your region. As you notice, there are many, many countries given an option here. Go ahead and scroll down until you find your country or region. And go ahead and hit Next. Then you'll be selected to ask about a keyboard layout. You can go ahead and try this later, but if you know your keyboard layout, go ahead and select it. Next, it's going to ask you about your storage option. There is a specialized option if you have a more advanced setup. If it's a very basic setup, you go ahead and select that basic option. But if you have any kind of network solution or LUN or SCSI, iSCSI running, go ahead and select that second option. Then it'll give you a device warning message saying it's going to rewrite whatever's on that LUN or disk or partition. So you want to be sure that you know absolutely which one you are selecting. Since it will overwrite whatever content is on that device. Next will be asked about your host name and network configuration setup. So you go ahead and give it your host name. It could be a fully qualified domain name or just the host name here. And next you can click down here configure network. If you do it now it's slightly easier than doing it later. So you go ahead and say connect automatically which is nice. On boot it will connect automatically. You can go ahead and choose manual, which is most servers will have a static IP, so manually enter your IP address here. And depending on your network, you enter your IP address, your network mask, and gateway. You can also enter your DNS information and your search domains. Search domains are whatever domain that you're on and also other domains that you would like to search under. So go ahead and select those two. You can also click on the wire tab and change your MAC address of your machine here as well if you want to. There's some certain security reasons or license reasons someone might do that. Click next to go ahead and save your options for your network and host name settings. Next you'll be asked about what region of the world you're in to go ahead and set your time zone settings. Just click on the nearest dot and it'll go ahead and set your time zone. Then you go ahead and click next to continue. Next we're going to set the root password. Be sure to set a nice complicated password for security purposes. And of course do not share this password with just anybody. It is a security risk. Next, you'll be asked about your installation option on the device that you select to be installed on, either the local hard drive or a network solution of some kind. So you could choose to say use all space, which is probably most servers would use all space. Now, if you're doing some kind of dual boot, you might want to do replace existing Linux systems. If you're doing a Windows Linux dual boot situation, be careful if you do any of the other options as I've seen them have failed. So if you do a shrink current system, be sure you back up your current system. For our server, we're going to use all disk space. Next, it's going to ask us about how we're going to partition that disk space that we selected, either the partition, the LUN, or a section of the disk. So we're going to go ahead and use logical volumes here. This is usually the default option. So if you notice, the SDA is the hard drive, and there's going to be one EXT4 partition, a hard partition of 500 megs of slash boot. Now, the rest of it is a logical partition. So first it creates a logical group known as VG underscore sent OS, sent OS server. And under that, we're going to have logical volumes for each of our partitions. Logic volumes are widely popular because they are configurable and adjustable in the future. So if you want to resize it for any purpose, um, you can go ahead and do that here. And then you can go ahead and select and add partitions. Another reason to separate your partition settings instead of just having the slash is for security reasons because you can mount it with different security options. And also do encryption on separate partitions. 
for example, if you want to encrypt just slash home, you can go ahead and do that if you mount it separately. And it's a separate either physical partition or a logical partition. At the very minimum, all Linux systems require three partitions, slash boot, a slash, and a swap space. So at minimum, you must have those three. Every other partition, like slash home, slash user, slash opt, are all optional partitions. So you could go ahead and add those if you choose to. If you go ahead and hit next, it's going to go ahead and start formatting the disk according to what you set in your partition table there. You notice to get this option, I did first say review partition in the previous window. So make sure you select that. Our next option will be is to set the bootloader. The bootloader will give you an option if you have a dual boot environment, you can change which one it will boot by default. The second option here is use bootloader password. This is useful if the server is not in a secure location. So someone else that has physical access to the server, you don't want them changing your boot option. So go ahead and setting that. You could also add a second bootloader option if you have another hard drive or if you add another hard drive later. Next we're going to choose this installation of the CentOS. That means the software we're going to install. It has some preset definitions here, desktop, minimum desktop. For a server, we're going to choose basic server and then we could add services later and add packages later as needed. If you happen to know if it's a database or web server, you can go ahead and select those other options here. Once selecting one of these predefined options, I'm going to select customize now at the bottom. That way I can review the packages that will be installed. And then I could add packages and remove packages as needed. If you're new to this environment, I always recommend going through and looking at the packages and becoming familiar with them. Also, if you're new to a server environment, I also recommend installing a desktop so you can have a GUI interface. Otherwise, if you're an expert Linux system, of course, all you need is a shell. So go now go ahead and click next. So you can go ahead and check dependencies of packages. If any dependencies are needed based on the ones you have selected or deselected, they will be installed automatically. If this will take a few minutes to go ahead and proceed with this process. Now the installation will begin. And this will go be a good time to go get a cup of coffee or take a break and come back in a few minutes to find yourself with a brand new CentOS installation. It's actually relatively fast to do this installation. I would say most of this, it's under 30 minutes. It's actually a very fast installation. It's also depending on the number of packages that you use. Once it's done installing all the software packages, it's going to go ahead and do your bootloader information on your disk. Now you always want to be careful when doing this during your selection, during the installation, because it will overwrite whatever bootloader you have there. So make sure you select it properly if you're doing some kind of dual boot environment. If it is a single boot, only CentOS running on this environment, this should be relatively smooth. Go ahead and reboot your system and it will bring you to your login screen. Enjoy your CentOS operating system. This is very similar to the Red Hat operating system and most things you could do on Red Hat you will be able to do on here as well as running a lot of the same software including the clustering software. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you like CentOS. Otherwise I'll see you guys next time and subscribe to get updates.